Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here, and here, once again, happens to be my home garage shop. And welcome to our midweek episode of what we like to call Stumped Q&A. The point of this video is to follow up the weekend video and answer your questions, comments, and cheap shots. That video happened to be on the use of off-the-shelf bandsaw blades, like this Bosch blade that I purchased at Lowe's, to determine can we use that, in fact, on a Shopsmith bandsaw. Um, we also talked about an LED light that I happen to have installed on both the Shopsmith and the Total Shop bandsaw. And um, let's see, I forget what else we have questions about, but let's just go ahead and cut right to it. So Robert Keeney commented about using that battery light, says he's been using it for about a year now, that he likes it, like I do, but uh, wanted to make sure that everybody knew that there are different color temperatures available for the light itself. It's absolutely right. When we measure light temperature, and we all grew up knowing that there's very cool light bulbs and warm light bulbs, um, we measure that in a unit of measure called Kelvin. And the lower the number, the warmer the light. So just the opposite of the way we measure Fahrenheit and Celsius. So um, the warmest light in America is the one you're going to buy in a home center. Uh, that's going to be about 2,700. That's very warm. Um, 3,000 Kelvin is very popular in kitchens. That's a warm color. 4,000 Kelvin. Now we're getting quite a bit cooler. Um, and then the coolest that you'll typically find in a residence is, is 5,000 Kelvin. I personally find 5,000 Kelvin a little bit harsh on my eyes, although the nice thing about 5,000 Kelvin is in your closet. You can tell whether those socks you're holding are black or navy blue. So, yeah, that plug-in light is available in a 4,000 and a 5,000 Kelvin version. I bought the 4,000 Kelvin. So, Great point. Thank you for mentioning that. RF Guy said, is that LED light UL rated? No, it is not. It has a couple ratings on it, but not UL. So if that matters to you, then avoid it. Um, in my home shop, I don't mind because I'm on concrete floors. I've got it attached to a, a metal saw. Um, I'm not worried about that, but if that concerns you, then don't buy it. Alex said, a plug-in light? Too many cords, why not batteries? All right, that's actually a very, very good point. So um, Alec, you'll notice here, that light happens to be off. That's a battery light. So uh, what light did I stick on the back of this saw? Um, you've probably never seen one of these before. So let me show it to you. They're, they're kind of rare and uh, relatively expensive. No, they're absolutely free to most of us. We get these at uh, Harbor Freight. And I thought, well, yeah, why not go ahead and see if we could stick one of these on the back of the bandsaw? And uh, sure enough, I can. You can see here, even though that bandsaw is made of aluminum, I have attached that to the back of the saw. Now, how did I do that? Let's uh, go to the cutaway, Bob. So you can see I used spec tape, which is that double-sided tape that I mentioned that I use when I'm temporarily holding something together. And I used a mending plate. I bought that mending plate at Home Depot. I think I paid $1.07, $1.09, something like that. And I stuck it to the, the back of the saw. Additionally, I'm playing around with the possibility of using rare earth magnets. So I'm using magnets both on the outside and the inside of the bandsaw to hold that in place. Now, for now, that's just applying some pressure against the tape. Spec tape is pressure sensitive. The more pressure you apply, the better it sticks. And um, you can see I position that so that it's not encroaching into the mouth of the saw. So it is level. The bottom of that is level with the, the mouth of the saw. So I have the full six inch depth of cut. So not a bad idea, Alec. Uh, thank you for mentioning that. And uh, yeah, why not? Go ahead and use your free Harbor Freight battery lights. Okay, uh, Albert says, so what blade does the Shopsmith bandsaw take? I can't believe I went to all the trouble of measuring the, uh, the total shop, the knockoff, and didn't even mention. Shopsmith bandsaw, the Shopsmith bandsaw, uses a 72-inch long blade. You can get those from Shopsmith and pretty much any of the, uh, the woodworking stores 
resellers. I happen to buy them mostly from the company. Um, what is her actual name? The company whose blades I use is Timberwolf. Um, that's the name of the blade, but the name of the company is not on the brochure. I think it's Suff Suffolk. I'll put a link down below. You can buy it on Amazon. And uh, they have several sizes available, obviously different lengths, but different uh, tooth counts and different uh, blade widths. Okay, Constant Gardener said, what is the best accessory shelf design? On the ShopSmith Mark V, uh, years ago, ShopSmith added a wooden shelf to it so that their demonstrators in the malls and trade shows and things could put all of the standard accessories down on that shelf and have them at their fingertips. They became so popular that people started asking, could they buy them? And sure, why not? And one of the weirdest things about them, kind of a strange twist of fate, is they're difficult to produce on your Mark V because it requires a number of routing operations and, and through cuts that you can't really do with the standard ShopSmith tool. Um, and so there's a, a bunch of folks that have designed various uh, shelves. Some of them I would not give my worst enemy. And uh, I'm working on a design myself because I don't like the homemade one that's on this saw. So we're gonna show that really soon. And uh, who knows, maybe my design will work or maybe we'll have to change it. but. Keep watching. Lance Farmer says, um, let's see, can you address the upgrades for the Shopsmith bandsaw, the older, I'm sorry, the older cast iron table version of the Shopsmith bandsaw? Yeah, there's an awful lot of things we could talk about there. We're not gonna do that in this video, but we will address that at some point. Um, you can upgrade it to this larger aluminum table. The aluminum table gives you the ability to put an extension as you can see here, I've got this little kind of an outrigger extension. If you have that, you can add a circle cutting attachment to that. And um, there have been several upgrades to the cover over, over the years, including they uh, added a dust port to the cover. And uh, now the latest iteration has a window here so you can see the tension gauge while the cover's on and they added a, a hole. Now, I added that hole myself to this cover, and um, I um, I haven't felt the need to cut a window in my cover, but we'll, we'll cover all of those upgrades in a video of their own, and uh, keep watching. Uh, Hooper57 says he is concerned about leaving, or should he be concerned, about leaving the Mark V in the drill press position. So leaving it up for days on end. Absolutely not. That machine is made uh, to handle all of the, the things you can throw at it. And in fact, there's a number of people who have taken these machines and just mounted them on the wall as standalone drill press. Uh, they're a wonderful drill press. So no, you, you can use them and leave them at any setup that you like and you're not gonna cause any damage. And then our last question on this video has to do with Carter Blade Guides. Carter is a company that sells all kinds of upgrades for bandsaws. And for the Shopsmith bandsaw, they have uh, two major upgrades. They were one of the first companies that I ever saw that had cool blocks where you can replace the steel guide blocks with, um, they're basically graphite um, impregnated I don't even know what they're, they're a... <laughs> anyway, I use them for a while and, and then I decided I don't need them because they're really ideal for use on very thin blades where you don't have a whole lot of material to hold on to with a guide block. So this blade, for example, right here, I mean, to guide that, you've got nothing here to hold on to it. And so with cool blocks, you can actually sandwich the blade and let the uh, set of the teeth notch the uh, cool blocks just a little bit, and that helps to guide it. Um, but back to Carter. Carter sells two really interesting guides. One of them replaces both the upper and the lower guide blocks on the ShopSmith bandsaw with uh, ball bearings. Now, there's a couple videos on YouTube of people who've done this, and a lot of people have done this with their other bandsaws, the non-Shopsmith bandsaws. I've never felt the need for it, therefore I've never installed them. But uh, if, if they appeal to you, it's hard to get 
products from a more reputable company than Carter. So uh, if that looks like something you'd like to try, I would say knock yourself out. Now, additionally, they have something that they call a stabilizer. And uh, that is a completely weird thing that's used if you're going to be using your bandsaw basically for scroll saw type cuts. So for any blade that's a quarter inch uh, narrow or smaller, and what you do is you completely remove the upper guide block and the lower guide block. And uh, that, that stabilizer replaces just the top one. So you have this wheel that's running that has a groove in it, and that helps to guide the blade. On most bandsaws, you have to put a, a fair amount of pressure against that so that the blade doesn't wander off the back. Um, Actually, no, it's not so the blade won't run on your back. It's so that in a cut, you don't pull the blade off of the wheels. The Shopsmith bandsaw, the upper wheel is tilted and designed in such a way that the blade wants to go towards the back. So you shouldn't have to put a lot of pressure against that uh, stabilizer. I played with one of those years ago, but not on a Shopsmith bandsaw, and it absolutely works. I just don't make those kind of cuts on my bandsaw. So I, I can't speak um with any great uh, authority on that so again if that's something you'd like to do run very narrow blades thin blades and do scroll saw type work with your shopsmith bandsaw yeah give it a, give it a shot uh look for reviews on that elsewhere because i ain't got nothing for you here <laughs> all right hey thanks for watching we're going to wrap this up and uh be sure to watch this coming weekend's video which will be on something interesting i have no doubt and uh subscribe would you Look forward to seeing you then. Make it a great day.